Hi, in this slide, I want to familiarize everybody a little bit more with power laws and what incredibly powerful high leverage power laws are hiding underneath the financial averages within our businesses. First of all, if you go to Wikipedia and you just Google, you just search for the term for power law, you'll find a lot on it. Basically, the bottom line is nature isn't democratic. In other words, if we went and said, let's look at, you know, a thousand earthquakes, are they all equal in size? The answer is no. They they move along a logarithmic scale, and for every mega big one, uh, there are lots of little ones. Ditto with for rivers, sizes of cities, um, and so forth. One of the things that is going on is that when something good or bad gets going, it can start to self-feed in itself and becomes a virtuous or vicious spiral. So you get increasing or decreasing returns that account for some of these huge uh, uh, dislocations or misallocations seemingly of, of resources. Within human activities, uh, about 1% of the, the words in the English language are used in over 80% of the conversation. Uh, a lot of this has to do with uh, uh, we're, we're, we're you know, creatures of affiliation or, or herds or tribes, and so we tend to speak like the people around us. And so the average teenager gets by with about you know 1,500 words, which include words, th phrases like, oh, my God, like, 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 like. Uh, so you, you get the picture. With movies... Historically, about 1% of the movies have generated about 80% of the ticket sales. Uh, we might ask of all the pieces of art on the planet, why is the Mona Lisa the number one most widely recognized popular painting? And if you go to the Louvre and, and, and Paris, the, there are lines a mile long to try to see the Mona Lisa, uh, when in fact there are thousands of, of paintings and so forth they've got in storage they can't even get out to display. And uh, it wasn't always the case. Really, before 1900, the Mona Lisa was was uh, hardly known. But it's a it's a long sort of uh, scenario or story of, of of accidents that compounded it, allow it to get the enormous popularity that it has. In 1906, an Italian economist named Wilfredo Pareto, here's his name came up with the anecdotal observation, he did studies of Western European countries, that 20% of the people owned about 80% of the land, which in an agrarian economy was equivalent to wealth. So that was the first, hey, the rich are rich and the poor aren't kind of observation of the 2080. This particular 2080 rule was popularized by Geron, who was a quality control guy, when he said, look, we're trying to get down to zero errors or no mistakes or perfect quality. If we do a fishbone diagram, there are lots of reasons that uh, contributory factors as to why we might have uh, imperfect quality. So let's identify the ones, the, f the vital few that are generating the most uh, um, uh, unquality and, and deal with those first. So let's uh, just prioritize our opportunities that way. And as a result, there are books called the 2080 this, the 2080 everything, and everybody assumes the 2080 is some sort of, uh, you know, came down on the third tablet with Moses, the one that got broken. Uh, it's just not the case. Now, within our business, uh, there are some very powerful uh, power laws that exist when we look at uh, ranking reports uh, tied into net profitability, which we'll look at in the next slide. Thank you.